Hi everyone, I'm Dheeraj Nagaraj. I'll be talking about a corrective view of neural networks, representation, memorization, and learning. This is joint work with Guy Bresler. We all know that neural networks are powerful universal approximators. They can approximate high dimensional complex functions very easily. We introduce a mathematical tool to obtain sharp bounds on the number of neurons required for representation state-of-the-art memorization results, and some polynomial bounds on the number of neurons required to learn low-degree polynomials via stochastic gradient descent or gradient descent. We know that neural networks can memorize or interpolate arbitrary labels quite easily. A long line of papers aim to understand uh, memorization in over-parameterized networks via stochastic gradient descent. Uh, the problem setup is summarized as follows. Given n arbitrary points on the sphere in d dimensions with arbitrary labels, how many neurons are necessary to memorize or interpolate these data points? We assume that the minimum distance between two points is theta, and the maximum error we can tolerate is epsilon, and we show that via gradient descent over the recombination weights only, uh, we can have a two-layer neural network uh, with O tilde n over theta to the four nonlinear units uh, memorize these labels. This is near optimal in N for a two layer ReLU network. And uh, this is the first result to achieve this via gradient descent. Uh, this is an overview of the various results on memorization. Uh, most results previously achieved uh, very high polynomial uh, complexity uh, in N as we can see here. The two results which are closest to ours is the one, one by Daniele, which achieves the optimal n over d, but with uh, assumptions on the distribution, that is, it has to be uniform over the sphere, and you can, uh, can only consider n to be polynomially large in d. And uh, Kawaguchi and Huang has similar assumptions as ours, but they have an extra factor of d in their complexity. And in our work, we get rid of the factor of d, and we obtain O tilde n over theta to the 4 complexity. Coming to our results on our representation, we want to approximate a real valued function over a ball of radius r in Rd with respect to the squared error. Uh, we consider the following uh, decay condition on the tail of the Fourier transform. Uh, this is the standard assumption, for instance, uh, made in Barron's uh, classic paper on representation by our uh, sigmoidal functions. Uh, roughly speaking, this means that f has theta ad bounded derivatives. We can show that uh, there exists a two-layer non-neural uh, network with uh, units of ReLU and smooth ReLU kind, which achieves a rate of 1 over n to the a. Uh, the C of a d factor here indeed is dimension dependent and quite bad. But uh, the, uh, the silver lining is that we can replace d with effective dimension q, which could be much smaller than d whenever there is a low dimensional structure. For instance, if we have, if we are approximating a low degree polynomial, like a quadratic polynomial, we can just replace D with two, which is equal to Q. So for uh, functions with theta AD bounded derivatives, previous results imp uh, implement Taylor series approximation. Uh, you get one over into the A squared error, but complex, uh, but via complex uh, deep networks with no known training results. Our results show that we can do the same thing with a two-layer network. And therefore, uh, depth is not essential in uh, a rapid, uh, in efficiently representing very smooth functions. Uh, we now describe our results on learning polynomials. We consider degree Q polynomials over d-dimensional input, that is Rd. Uh, with suitable random feature sampling, we can learn this class of functions via gradient descent on the recombination weights up to error epsilon with uh, complexity C of Q d to the 2Q subpolynomial of 1 over epsilon, where subpoly means it can be made smaller than any fixed polynomial. So the neurons here are of the, are of the kind ReLU and smooth ReLU. These are the first subpolynomial learning bounds for this problem in literature. So the main idea behind all our results is called the corrective mechanism. So here we divide the number of available neurons into multiple groups. The first group approximates the function under consideration. The second group approximates the error produced by the first and corrects it. The third group approximates 
and corrects the error by the first produced by the first two groups and so on under certain conditions we can do a corrective steps and this gives us a, a rate of error rate of 1 over n to the a um well, we we also state learning results which are an offshoot of the representation results in the following way uh, we suppose uh, you we use the random features model to do this suppose we have a two layer uh, non uh, two layer neural network of this form given here then uh, we draw wi and ti at random over some tractable distribution for instance uh, for instance wi could be uniform over the sphere and ti could be uh, uniformly random from minus 1 to 1 and then we optimize only over kappa i that is the recombination weights this reduces an on convex optimization problem to a smooth convex optimization problem and uh, std for uh, uh, neural networks with large number of neurons reduces to this approximately because inner weights don't change appreciably for a large number of iterations. Uh, we pick wi uh, ti from some tractable distribution and show via probabilistic method that there exists a kappa i naught which achieves an error of at most epsilon. Uh, the random features optimization must give kappa i star which can do at least as well as kappa i naught that is achieve uh, at, uh, error of at most epsilon we now describe in uh, in some detail the proof method for memorization which is the easiest by far uh, suppose we are given data points x1 to xn and labels y1 to yn we construct the following discrete fourier transform we take psi to be uh, normally distributed where with uh, variance uh, theta is root log n over uh, theta and where theta is the minimum distance we consider the following inverse fourier transform uh, we can uh, we can see that this works because the co in the summation for the fourier transform the coefficient of yj is one and uh, the for the rest of them it, it is an, a complex exponential which oscillates so fast that it cancels it makes it approximately zero under this expectation so since uh, LHS is real valued, we know that this must actually reduce to a cosine function expectation of mod f of psi multiplied by a cosine function of this form. We then replace cosine functions with uh, ReLU functions using integration by parts formula. That is, if we have t uniform in minus 2 comma 2 and independent of psi, we have yj to be e approximately equal to this formula, which is in terms of ReLU instead of cosine uh, since we have an equality in, uh, in expectation we can always construct uh, an empirical estimator by sampling psi k and tk and n out of these independently at random and constructing the following empirical estimator a simple calculation via gaussian concentration shows that the uh, l2 norm of the error labels is contracts uh, with respect to the L2 norm of the original labels by this factor. So therefore, if we use at least uh, n over theta to the four neurons, there is a contraction. So uh, after this correction step, we replace y with y minus y1 hat, and we estimate it with y2 hat similarly. And therefore, we can conclude that uh, the, uh, after the second correction step, uh, we have a contraction by a squared factor we can we don't have to stop at after two steps we can continue it for log n over epsilon steps and then we show via simple arguments that the expected uh, error in the final label is at most epsilon so therefore we conclude that memorization requires at most o tilde n over theta to the four log one over epsilon activation functions uh, coming to the representation theorems for in over uh, functions over defined over a continuum uh, we follow a similar procedure as memorization but uh, with more sophisticated techniques for this we need uh, a mixture of relu and smooth relu functions because uh, the fourier transform of relu function is not well behaved enough because of uh, non differentiability at zero a smooth relu k function or s relu k function is the same as relu function outside a neighborhood of zero but it is uh, 2k times uh, uh, continuously differentiable we first approximate 
uh, the target function f by f1 hat, which is a two layer SLUK network with n activation functions. Uh, standard uh, Fourier analytic techniques allow us to show that the error is at most one over n times CF squared, where CF is a norm on the Fourier transform of f. Uh, after certain mollification and other surgery, we can show that the Fourier transform of f1 hat is an unbiased estimator for the Fourier transform of f. Therefore, roughly, the Fourier norm of the error function that is f minus f1 hat contracts by a factor of one over square root n. So therefore, we now estimate the remainder function with another neural network f2 hat with n nonlinear units such that uh, the error of a uh, remainder function with respect to f2 hat is cf square over n squared. From this, it is easy to conclude that uh, the error of f1 hat plus f2 hat with, uh, with respect to the original function f is at most 1 over n square. We can continue this a times to get rates of 1 over n to the a. After each corrective step, the remainder function becomes less and less smooth till further approximation is impossible. And this depends on how smooth the original function is. And uh, given we have theta ad bounded derivatives, we can do this a number of times. An application of these representation results is the learning result for low degree polynomials. We consider f of x, which is a multinomial over of degree q over rd, where each pv is a monomial of degree at most q. The state of the art learning results for this problem by a gradient descent requires d to the 2q times 1 over epsilon squared number of nonlinear units. Purely representation results with complex deep networks require polylog of 1 over epsilon number of uh, nonlinear units. So there's a huge gap between these two regimes. We bridge this gap by, consider by giving a, a guarantee for learning. Uh, which is subpolynomial in 1 over epsilon. Here, we mean, what we mean by subpolynomial is that it can be made smaller than any polynomial in 1 over epsilon. This gives us the first subpolynomial guarantees for this problem. The learning results, as we stated, are an application of the representation results under the random features regime. Uh, f of x has an effective dimension uh, much smaller than uh, d, which is q. It is infinitely differentiable, so we can achieve the rates of c of a comma q uh, over n to the a for arbitrary a belongs to n. So we sample wi and ti from a tractable distribution, which is agnostic to the function being represented, and show that there exists coefficients bi such that the random neural network uh, approximates the given uh, polynomial f up to the following error, which scales as 1 over n to the a in expectation. Uh, whenever n is at least epsilon to the minus 1 over a, which is subpolynomial uh, as a tends to infinity, we can pick coefficients uh, b, i, j, v, so that the squared error is at most epsilon, letting a tending to infinity slowly enough as epsilon tends to 0. This gives us the subpolynomial bounds, which we desire. <laughs>